I'm Glenn Crandall. Uh, I like to do segmented turnings. And one of the big problems in segmented turnings is getting the segments all cut accurately so that the joints come together without any gaps. The way that I have found to cut accurate, accurate segments is to use this device, which is called a wedgie sled. This is a sled that was developed by Jerry Bennett. It's a very simple device. It's just a couple of fences that you set to the right angles. It has a guide that rides on the, on the miter gauge slot. I use a magnetic fe oh, feather board for a, a fence. Uh, there are a number of other methods to do that. I'm going to talk about some design software. Uh, there's some very good design software out there for, for making segmented turnings. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about it. I won't go into any great detail on it. Uh, I'll show you how to build a sled. Uh, I can't do the whole thing here tonight, uh, primarily because uh, mine are made out of MDF, and if I run a router in here running MDF, this place will fill with with MDF dust. So, but uh, I can demonstrate how to do it. Uh, then I'll uh, I'll show you how to use the sled. We'll put one together and and, uh, and cut some segments, uh, assemble rings, and and. Uh, and show you how I put the rings together to, to make a bowl. My design software, uh, the stuff that I use, there's a couple of authors out there that are building uh, design software. But what I use is done by a man by the name of Lloyd Johnson. Uh, he has four programs that I'm aware of now. He may have more because he seems to be prolific. Uh, 3D Design Pro. Wood Turner Pro, Segment Pro, and Lamination Pro, and those are the those are the links to those programs. Uh, they're readily available. Uh, they are for sale. They, you can get uh, uh, trial uh, samples uh, or trial trial uh, programs. 3D Design Pro. Its main function is just to lay out the uh, profile of a bowl. You can design your own. It gives you the capability of starting off with a blank page and design whatever profile you want. There are so there are also uh, a large number of, of uh, profiles available that you can use either as they are or uh, modify them. The result of, of, your, uh, of, your, of your construction uh, can be transferred to a program called Wood Turner Pro. And Wood Turner Pro will tell you uh, how, to, uh, how to cut segments, how to, how to build a bowl. This is uh, an example of 3D Design Pro. Use your, <coughs> use your mouse to set points into the, into the screen and as you design the bowl OI, uh, you will create a, a 3D representation of it for you. So you can see what you're building. Once you, once you have uh, a design set, uh, you don't like it, you can, uh, you can move points around. You're, uh, you're free to uh, push anything around you want. Uh, 
quick question. What are these, what's the approximate cost of all these various software? I think if you want the whole, the whole four programs that cost you between $150 and $200. Okay. And obviously what you see here is just half a bowl. You're building, you're building on one side. But, uh, there's, uh, several options that, that you can, that you can use to, uh, set up what you're doing here. And, uh, I, I can't go into all of them. You need to, you really need to have a program in front of you to be able to play with it. But uh, it's it's very versatile. Wood Turner Pro, you transfer you transfer what you've done in 3D Design Pro to Wood Turner Pro, and Wood Turner Pro is going to uh, allow you to determine. First of all, uh, the transfer is going to allow you to determine the size of the vessel. Uh, when you are setting up your your drawing here. Uh, there is no size. You could be doing a bowl or a figure that's two inches, two inches big, two inches tall, or two feet tall. Uh, it, it, it doesn't show on this program. But when you do the transfer, you're asked to say what the, what the, the height and or the width is going to be. And that that brings you into Wood Turner Pro. And this is designed for airing and modifying ring details. Uh, you can once once you have the design in there you can you can still modify the design somewhat in Wood Turner Pro. And this is the kind of display you're going to get from Wood Turner Pro. Uh, this is the this is the design that came in and when I brought it in I told him that the the width of the uh, Right there, the width of the bowl is going to be seven and a half inches. This, the height is going to be six inches. And then I determined uh, how many rings. Sorry, wrong direction. Uh, I determined how many rings there were going to be. In this case, I think there's six. Uh, you determine the number of segments that you want in a ring. In this particular case, the, this is the ring that's selected, and there's 12 segments. The board thickness is 3 quarters of an inch, that's the thickness this way. Uh, the outside diameter of that particular segment is 7 3 sixteenths. Uh, it gives you inside diameter also. Uh, there are no vertical spacers, that's a, that's a different function. Then it tells you what the segment edge length. So when you cut one of these segments here, the outside length uh, of the bowl is is going to be, in this case, uh, one and five, one and fifteen sixteenths. Uh, the width of the board, that's this measurement here, is going to be one and five sixteenths. And you're going to need a board that's uh, a little over twenty inches long in order to make that ring. So this guy, is, this program is giving you all of the information you need to make a segmented bowl. You can select any number of segments that you want. I've got 12. Uh, 12 happens to be just a, a, an easy number. Uh, it gives you a pretty good pattern on the, on the bowl, but uh, you can go you know, high as you want to go. High as is practical. You can, uh, in this case, this this segment is a solid piece. Uh, the rest of them are all segmented pieces all the way up here. Uh, when you uh, when you bring your first your profile in originally, you can come up here and tell him to do a profile snap. And he will set all of these segment, seg, 
segment sections for you. You determine the number of rings that you're going to have, and then you'll determine what what the dimensions of each uh, of each rings are going to be. Is there any questions about that one? So in this case, you kept them all three quarters of an inch. Yeah, Thick. for for simplicity. Okay. All right. Uh, this is the cutting chart that he uh, that, that he uh, gives to you. So you've got all the information you need. Uh, like I said, you can see that the bottom one, the bottom one section is a fixed disc. The rest of them are all flat rings. Uh, you can tell what species you want. He's got a whole laundry list of, of different woods. Uh, and. Uh, I've selected 12 segments on all of them, and they're all three quarters of an inch thick, just to keep things simple. It's, it's a really good program. It's, it takes, takes all of the all of the work process out of designing a pole. Uh, the wedgie sled was originally designed by Jerry Bennett. And he has a company called Seg Easy. Uh, the thing about the uh, the wedgie sled is it's it's two fences. It's, it's the two fences that make it almost impossible to make a mistake as far as cutting angles is concerned. There's a construction video here and another one here done by two different people. All right. In my particular case, uh, I'm making it out of, out of MDF. I have a base that's 12 by 14. These measurements are not critical. Uh, it's whatever's comfortable. And as a matter of fact, uh, when I went to go ahead and cut some some pieces for a demonstration tonight. They're not these dimensions anymore. Doesn't make any difference. Uh, you need a base, you need two fences, uh, four carriage bolts, washers, and knobs. Uh, I've uh, purchased knobs. I was chastised by a member for not making my own. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> Larry, it <laughs> was a joke. You slap him silly. Yeah. They're on sale on the sale table. Yeah, and uh, and you need a runner to fit in the table saw slot and an off cut off cut ramp. Uh, since the uh, the sled is about three quarters of an inch thick, uh, you're cutting pieces that have a tendency to fall off the end of the saw and. Uh, show you the ramp here a little bit. But the purpose of the ramp is to keep you from throwing pieces of wood all over the place. Easy supplies fixed wedges that are precision made. Uh, I have here a, a 16, a 24, and a 32 segment wedge. And I'll, we'll see how those work in a little while. consists of two fences. The only thing critical about the fences is that they must be dead parallel to each other, parallel edges. Uh, a second board, which if you if you see the videos, they'll make another piece of plywood about like this. Show it. I'm sorry. Uh, they'll show a, a 
piece of plywood like this. I chose to use a bigger plywood because I want a better base for my router table. Router, because this is this is basically a router table. What you do here is you drill a pair of holes in here at whatever. I, I've shown them six inches apart. The, the measurements are not critical. Uh, you need to be an inch to an inch and a half in from the, the edge in order to clear the knob. But beyond that, this just needs to be able to fit onto your base. The template is similar except that I've offset the holes. Rather than having my inch and a half from the end, I've come in here far enough to uh, clear my, uh, my router. So start off by drilling everything at one time. So basically, I would tape the pieces together, drill off Draw all, all the holes. After those are done, I go to my base. And I had a problem today. I had to make this base a little bit smaller. Fit in my carrying coat. Cut the wrong end off. <laughs> but what I would have done would be to come in here an inch and a half on each of these lines and, and drill a quarter inch hole. After that, double face tape to the bottom of the router, use a plunge router, put in a quarter inch diameter bit. Drop a bolt in the hole, route an arc. Uh, lay the arc out so that it's about 90 degrees to the, to the end of the fence here. And swung about 30 degrees. Again, none of this is critical. You go a little farther, either way, a little less. <clears throat> Do the two halves. Once you've <clears throat> once you've routed the quarter inch, you replace the bit with a five eighths straight bit. Work from the other side. Same process again, routing a recess <coughs> in here on each of the arcs. And the only tricky the only tricky one is when you have to put the recess in the first holes. You can find a hole here, but Finding the center at this point is a little difficult, and it took me a couple of tries to get, to get these in here. Build the sled, put a couple of carriage bolts into the bottom.
the whole idea is that these need to swing free. So in order to use one of these, tighten the fence down, run your wedge in. Tighten the bolts. Now you need a runner. I've used plastic stuff. The, uh, the cool thing about the runner is that you don't try to fit it exactly to the slot. You drill a hole in each end and make a slight cut in it with a fine saw, but you do one third in from the edge, and you do it in the edge that's away from the saw blade, so that when you put the runner in, any slop that's in there as you adjust the screws it pushes the runner against the side of the slot that's near the blade. There can't be any wiggle and there can't be any misadjustment. I had no idea what the dimensions of this saw were going to be when I came. So I haven't made arrangements to screw this to the bottom. Check to see if there's any wiggle. Nothing at that end. Just the absolute smallest here. That's good. Raise the blade. Turn the end.
there are diagrams out there or there's, there's videos out there on how to make a, a uh, stop block. That's the best one in the world. Additional item. You need something to keep the cuts from falling off the, off this surface onto the floor and get kicked into the blade. I would insert in this case saw with this Well, that's what you're doing. the marks is because the angles aren't the same on both sides. In other words, the angle from here to here is not exactly 15 degrees and the angle from here to here is not exactly 15 degrees. This one and this one. The combination of both angles is 30 degrees. So if you divide a circle up into 12 pieces, you get a 30 degree angle, 15 degrees on each end. But if you've got 16 degrees on one side and 14 on the other, you still have 30 degrees, it'll still make a circle. So if I keep... Put together on the other side of the fence the camera will be better. Uh, so. I don't want to mix those up because they're not the right way.
So I'm alternating the inside edge, this line, with every other segment. Excuse me? Do you look the whole room at Yes, sir. I've got the two and two and... No. Okay. I just grab one out and set it aside so that there's a lot of slop in there and take the next ring and glue one face and glue the next face right to it until, uh, until I've got them all in there and then tighten it up. So that pretty much takes care of the wedgie sled. So now that I've got a ring, I gotta glue my rings together. What I used to do was take the first ring, turn it, turn it around on the lathe. In this case, it would be the solid disc at the bottom. And then I would take the next ring and I would put it on there and I would measure in from each side to get the distance the same. And I found that <clears throat> if you made an error uh, and offset the ring a little bit on one side, it didn't hurt because you're turning a lot of wood off, off all, of these, all of these facets off anyway. The problem that I encountered was if you made the same error in the same direction on three or four rings. <laughs> yeah, it Holy begins Holy to Holy. go this way. So that's the reason I do this. See, that's glued to a sacker. You, you glued your base to a... Uh... This is just, it's just a waste block, and I'm, I've got screws into that. Uh, they're probably an inch long, I guess, something like that. Plenty of room where I can park this off. <coughs> but that's where the coal jaws come in. <coughs> Excuse me. Finish a ring. Now, once a ring is finished, it runs. I run through a drum sander. So I flatten the ring on both sides. You can't get them perfectly flat. You saw me pounding on them a little bit. It still doesn't help. They'll still slip a little bit. But uh, run, the, run the ring through the drum sander and get both sides flat and parallel to each other. And then it's just a matter of shoving them up against the, 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 the uh, finished bowl. And I'll put a mark on the edges of these so that I know where the center of a segment is because I want to stagger the segments like that. And then it's just a matter of putting a little bit of pressure on it and checking to see if there are any gaps in here. And if both of these are flat and both of them have been made parallel, there won't be any gaps. Then you glue up the ring? Then I glue the two rings together. Thank you.